In today's abandoned video, we are covering a lineup of historic abandoned buildings that are connected by being spawn of the Glasgow School Board in Scotland that dates back to the 1870s. This new educational development removed control of teaching from the Catholic Church, instead placing it into the hands of popularly elected members of council. It transformed the school system for the better. Over 75 schools were built between 1873 and 1918, and many today lie in ruins, either due to cost of upkeep or location. Join us today as we step inside some of them to discover their state. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Our most recent question was, should homeless people be allowed to stay in recently shut abandoned buildings? We had more responses than ever before, but this one from SoFall26 stood out. They spoke about the reality of this question. Despite it being ideal for homeless people to have a place to stay, the money involved in securing a building like this makes it far more plausible to just provide support funding to services and charities for the same cause. In relation to today's video, we would like to ask for any personal connections or stories about the schools shown. Be sure to comment below to be in with a chance of featuring in our next upload. After months of planning, on one day on our late summer road trip to Scotland, we set out to see how many disused Glaswegian schools we could manage. At the time, we were accompanied by the excursionists, but if you missed our recent announcement, they are now a part of Abandoned, as two explorers becomes four. The city boasts some incredible architecture that has been preserved over centuries, but also a lot of abandoned buildings. Months ago, we discovered that one sort of building in particular seems to thrive in dereliction in Glasgow, schools. Like Sir John Maxwell School in Pollockshaws, shown here, many of these structures sit neglected and shuttered off to the public. We were immediately fascinated by the towering buildings that are dotted all around Glasgow, but also surprised at the deterioration that has been allowed to take place at some of them. Of course, it isn't easy to keep a Victorian structure inhabited. Although the architecture is impressive, it is mostly outdated and not equipped to survive centuries like the modern buildings we see today. The cost of upkeep or renovation for the schools is very high, and for the council it seems that they would rather leave it alone to crumble to the ground inevitably. In 1872, the Education Act of Scotland would create the foundation for today's education system. It took control of teaching away from the church so that members of the newly founded Glasgow School Board could make decisions, who were elected by popular vote. Before the act in the city, 40% of children didn't attend school, which was more than 35,000. 10% of the attending students were regular absentees. This contributed to acknowledged illiteracy of people leaving school and moving into their future. Urgently, the school board wanted to reduce these figures, and made schooling compulsory for ages 5 to 14, as well as free, which allowed families with little money to send their children into education. Within 30 years from the Act's passing, illiteracy had been eliminated in Scotland. Between 1873 and 1918, 75 schools were built, each accommodating between 800 to 1,000 students. The construction was funded by loans from the Scotch Educational Department. Glasgow's school board completely revolutionised education in the country. By the end of the 19th century, schooling was the norm for children and could only improve to the standard it is at today. It seemed as if we were getting nowhere with our troubles, as every school we had visited was sealed tight. Finally we arrived at the imposing St James's Primary School, where our luck would change. This school was built in 1895. It felt like fate made this the one that would turn out to be accessible, as it is a perfect example of the potential of these abandoned structures. We're in our first Glasgow school. 
very colourful in here. This looks like the middle landing. Holy shit. That goes all the way to the roof. Wow. The amazing free floor balcony design was iconic with these schools. It appeared especially surreal in St James's due to light from the skylight being the only natural source let into the building, with every other window boarded. Look at these designs on the wall. That's the school. Actually looks a fair bit like that now with the black boards that cover almost every window. Some gym equipment still in this bit. Maybe they use this lower floor as the gym. The deterioration in the building is some of the worst we have ever seen, making many rooms inaccessible. We decided to stick to the concrete staircases, doorways and balcony as it seemed safest. This is the canteen. Create your meal deal. Select your main item, then do the pink mix. You had to have soup and bread, or two veg portions, yoghurt, two fr fruit portions, or milk and fruit juice. So they were obviously trying to keep the kids healthy. The floor's totally collapsed in that corner. It's like two metres down. They had stuff written on the wall. Away from the atrium, two identical ornate staircases carried students to higher floors. With little furniture inside, some of the friendly wall art was our best glimpse into the past. Oh, wow. It's cool that it's left. St James's School closed in 2009, but was B-listed in the early 90s due to its fine stonework detailing. We can't be certain, but we assume the closure relates to maintenance fees as the property has quickly fallen into disrepair. Another empty classroom. I don't really expect much from the insides of these buildings, but I think they're worth documenting because mainly they haven't been before either. This classroom still has some of the desks, but they've been weighed down by water damage, actually bending. These little wooden designs look quite old, it's like a miniature cloakroom. These are showers. The school have showers inside? Don't know, I didn't think it was like a boarding school. Pretty sure they're not. Maybe that was just something they offered to kids who couldn't have one at home. At the top floor, we were overwhelmed by some of the craziest natural decay we have come across. Beneath the Greek-styled skylight, the floor was mossy and a huge bush had developed over time. It's the sort of nature-caused development that would cause a collapse of this balcony in the future because of the weight pulling on the walls the plant is attached to. This was the ideal start to our exploration of Glasgow schools. The interior had shared the same degree of architecture that the outside shows to the public, and there was hardly any human destruction. It's 
Some of these rooms I don't even dare step in because of how mushy the floor is. This was the staff room though. It's a retro fire alarm on the wall. The floor here just crumbles under my feet. This is a, a larger classroom, not in terms of height, but length. Plans are out there suggesting the refurbishment of the school into a learning environment. It would feature 12 teaching spaces, a free court sports hall and a drama room with a stage. With the state of the building, it seems unlikely to us that a lot of the architecture would be saved. Also, it would cost an almighty fee to complete such a transformation, as well as a lot of time. Whether this will go ahead, we can't be sure. After succeeding in a walkthrough of the derelict property, it was time for us to move on with so many other schools to check. Luckily our next one was just down the road. On our usual exploring days, we managed to visit two or three places before daylight runs out. The fact we were able to see so many of these structures in one day stresses how many of them are out there across Glasgow. Despite our coverage of what we would consider the main ones, we still think that we hardly scratched the surface of the sites. There are definitely others out there, and time also for the ones we found sealed on this day to open up. If you would like us to make this video into a series and revisit Glasgow, let us know in the comments, but we'd say it's very likely. It didn't take us long to find our way into another. This time we found ourselves face to face with Golf Hill Public School, possibly the most well known of all. Again located in a residential area, the three storey property that closed in the early 2000s towers over its surrounding homes. Built in 1902 with red sandstone brick, it is a good example of a school board structure and we were excited to see what lay inside. The difference we noticed instantly was the lack of boarding on the outside, except for the bottom floor. This would mean that we would hardly need torches in Golf Hill and could enjoy the building with natural lighting. Wow. Oh my god, look at that red ceiling. This is like a longer version of the one before prior, but the double staircase is much nicer. Upon entering, we triggered a motion sensor that you might be able to hear. This at least shows that somebody is caring for the property as they arrived shortly after we had vacated the school. Ah, this is a cafeteria. Also with the fuel zone signs that the last one had. So strange. They're not too far away, but Almost the exact same interior and basic styles. Oh my god, look at this banister. Maybe one way was the entrance and one way was the exit. It's beautiful. We were wrong. The separated staircase was one of the strict regulations that the Scotch Educational Department wanted in their buildings, to have separate entrances and stairs for boys and girls. This was the normal for Victorian schools all across the UK, as men were expected to earn a living with women staying at home. With all the good that the SED did for education in the country, it is important to look at this opinion they had as plainly wrong, and one that is right to be kept in the past. It's actually quite smashed up here. Although it's fairly sealed now, I reckon in the past it wasn't. It's probably why they boarded every window, they were sick of stuff getting broken. It definitely felt as if some construction work was going on inside Golf Hill School, as we could find building materials and the typical yellow lights you see during construction work. The building is also categorised as one with restoration in progress on the Buildings at Risk Register. little piece of gym equipment there but from these desks I doubt it was the gym 
looks like an IT classroom, I'd assume from the plugs. I actually saw these desks in the other school in the exact same fashion, but they were much more decayed. Compared to St James's Primary School, this one was in a much better condition, although still falling apart in places. We were able to enter each room without worry that the floor would be unstable, which could be an effect of safety work that has gone ahead. There's much more water damaged up here at the top. Wow. This roof is awesome bright red as well. And you can see the bits where it's chipping and revealing the white former paint behind. In Gulf Hill, the roof of the skylight shone light down to lower floors, but was of a different make. Its bright red design was wooden with beam arches holding it up, in comparison to the stone design of the school we visited prior. All the classrooms are pretty much the same in this square format, with one side being window panels. Plans are underway to convert the exceptional structure into housing, with the development team expressing how important it is to them to protect some of the rarer details, such as the school's towers and facade. It would be an incredible job if successful, and one we would only want to see in years to come if we were passing. With correct concerns that someone would be entering the structure soon to assess the alarm, we decided to exit the building while still alone. The day had gone very well, considering how well we anticipated the ceiling of the schools to be. We would love to return in the near future to visit more and hope to bring you another video like this. If you enjoyed, be sure to like the video and be welcome to share any thoughts of what we could add to future videos showcasing the Glasgow School Board. Here are some of our photographs captured on the day. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images from our explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked a different sort of exploration video as we were aiming for more of a documentary. If you would like to see more, remember to let us know. See you next time.